Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, just come in from finishing my morning exercise routine and I thought I would share, I thought I'd share some of the benefits of regular based exercise uh, as per the research and some of the statistics that we know of uh, what can actually happen if we partake in regular exercise. So I do apologize that obviously as time goes on, uh, my beard and my hair continues to grow uh, and the fact that I've just jumped around up and down in the garden that makes it look a, a, a whole lot worse than it, it probably is once I get out of the shower. However, I just really wanted to jump on and, and talk about some of the benefits that we see, that we know, that are, are available to us just by exercising for 30 minutes a day, five times a week. So it's a, a total of 150, 150 minutes. And, and if you look at that total, 150 minutes is essentially the length of a long movie nowadays. You know, you take anything like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, their running times are generally roughly two, two, to, two to two and a half hours. And so in that time, in that same length of time, you could get some of these amazing benefits. And I've actually pulled down and written down some of the statistics so you can actually pull the numbers and see just how big an impact exercise can actually have on preventing and a lot of the time we wouldn't even consider these as preventable diseases a lot of the time we would consider these like bad luck or genetics and and the reality of it is is that actually our genetics do not predispose whether we are going to develop disorders it's our environment that's going to that's going to determine our disorders so here are some of the the biggest uh, benefits of exercise and here are the statistics to go with them so with 150 minutes of reasonable exercise, so this is where you have to get your heart rate up to a level where it's going above like just a, a, just a standard heart rate so that you really kind of want to hit 65% of your max heart rate and above in order for these to actually be taking, taking place. So just strolling down the street doesn't necessarily count because you're not going to raise your heart rate high enough. But if you get your heart rate high enough and you're doing exercise to a level where you're actually starting to create some rigor, uh, these are some of the benefits that we're going to see. A 35% decrease in coronary heart disease. A 50% reduction in type 2 diabetes. This one's a particularly personal one to me. For those of you that don't know, my mum had bowel cancer. There's a 50% reduction in colon cancer. And a lot of the time we wouldn't even think of cancer as being one of those things that would be uh, benefited by exercise, but it is. There's a 20% reduction in breast cancer. There's a 30% reduction in the likelihood of dying early. There's an 85% reduction in the risk of osteoarthritis. So a lot of people that think that they're getting degeneration in their joints, they think they're getting it from being overactive. And actually, the completely opposite is true, that actually being active helps to keep the muscles and the joints lubricated and warm and well exercised and keep them strong actually helps to benefit and adapt and actually reduce the reduction of osteoarthritis. So that's, you know, that's a huge statistic. Regular exercise five times a week at 30 minutes at a time is an 83% reduction in the risk of osteoarthritis. Regular exercise, 150 minutes of exercise a week, a 68% reduction in the risk of having a hip fracture. So when we start to look in our elderly populations, uh, this is something that becomes a massive, massive issue. But by just doing 30 minutes of even fast, vigorous walking per week will actually have this kind of an impact on people's health. Regular exercise, 150 minutes of exercise per week, a 30% reduction in the risk of falls. A 30% reduction in the risk of dementia. What we know about uh, dementia, it's a neurodegenerative disorder. And actually what we know about exercise, it is a neuro uh, excitatory exercise. So there's people that are losing neurons in their spinal cord and their brain and getting uh, changes in memory. Uh, we see the same kind of thing, exercise improves memory and attention even in children. So the thing is, is we know it affects our brain, we know it affects our neurons and so we'll see a 30% reduction in the risk of dementia if we're partaking in regular exercise. And finally the last statistic that I found for you guys is there's a 30% reduction in the risk of depression. Um, 
serotonin is our main feel-good hormone that we produce in our body and then when we do exercise we actually produce more serotonin and um, we give ourselves that natural endorphin rush and the hardest thing that i always found with getting people that have depression to do exercise is getting the motivation okay so that's going to be the most challenging bit but if you need any help in any of these areas or you, you know, you, you need to understand more about how to exercise, you can reach out to us. Like, this is the great thing about this current scenario is that we have the abundance of availability to discuss these issues and these topics with you. And so, like I say, 150 minutes of exercise a week, you know, we can see huge, 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 huge changes. So I'm quickly gonna just run through those percentages one more time. 35% reduction in heart disease, 50% reduction in type two diabetes, 50% reduction in colon cancer, 20% of breast uh, reduction in breast cancer, 30% reduction in early early death, 83% reduction in osteoarthritis, 68% reduction in risk of hip fractures, 30% reduction in risks of falls, 30% risk risk reduction in dementia, and 30% reduction in depression. Guys, these are just tip of the iceberg of some of the benefits of exercise. We know that we can get in, improved pulmonary function, reduce risk of pulmonary diseases, asthma. We can see reduction in muscle injuries. Uh, there is just so many benefits, so, so, so many benefits. In fact, we've even seen it in kids in reductions in stuff like ADHD, in autism, Asperger's. These all fall under this umbrella, but these are some of the statistics that are actually, and you can go and find these statistics, by the way. I, I, you know, I didn't pull these statistics out of the air. These are all registered on the NHS website. So these are all peer reviewed journal uh, based information that you can go and pull these statistics and actually have a look at some of the risk reductions. And like I said, if we could put these benefits into a tablet, the pharmaceutical company would have invented the best pharmaceutical drug on the planet and what we know about exercise is there's absolutely no side effects to exercise so 150 minutes of exercise the, the worst thing that you've had to do is give up two hours and like i say two hours nowadays is essentially the equivalent to a long movie harry potter is an easily longer movie than two hours so to do two two to two and a half hours of exercise per week in order to get all of these risk reductions later on in life personally to me is an absolute no-brainer if you need advice on how you can actually make some changes or say how you can integrate exercise easily into your lifestyle we've easily got some tips on our youtube channel you can easily reach out to us you can send us a message you can send us an email most of you will be receiving emails from the clinic anyway all you have to do is just respond and we can send you in the right direction guys enjoy your sunday i hope you found some value in this go and look up these statistics like i say they're on the nhs website i'm not just here to bs you guys i'm here to help you in the development of your health and benefit your life if you need anything reach out ciao